Good morning. Uh, so today we'll discuss uh, mixture distributions. Uh, so far, what we've been able to do is to look at the individual claim severity distributions as well as the uh, claim frequency distributions. And uh, now we want to look at a scenario where we assume that the parameters that model say the claim severity are not uniform for policyholders within a certain portfolio or within a certain group of insurance policies. So, for instance, if you consider uh, the case that is given here, we are assuming that uh, Mr. Ferrari uh, claims over a certain period of time follow an exponential distribution, or else uh, that of uh, Mr. Trabant uh, claims as well, they follow another exponential distribution. However, the parameters uh, for this exponential uh, distribution differ from one uh, policyholder to the other. They differ from Mr. Ferrari's to Mr. Tra uh, Trabant's, meaning that uh, we may not really assume that our parameter of lambda depicting the exponential distribution for each of the experiences is the same. So for instance, uh, Mr. Ferrari's parameter of lambda may be equal to 2, uh, that of Trambant may be equal to 2.5. So we want to look at a scenario where we assume that the claim amount or the claim severity follow an exponential distribution with the parameter of lambda. However, this parameter of lambda varies from one, insure, uh, one insured to another. So it will also be following another distribution. So that in this case, we'll be saying that our x depicting the claim severity or the claim amount follow an exponential where uh, the, the, the parameter of lambda is varying again with respect to another distribution so that it is now the distribution of the claim amounts x given the distribution of lambda that follow the exponential. So to be able to do so, we must therefore define uh, the corresponding distribution by which our parameter of lambda is going to be evolving with. So in this particular case, if we assume that now this parameter of lambda tied to the exponential distribution which models the claim severity follows now a gamma distribution with new parameters alpha and delta like so then it means that our lambda parameter has the corresponding distribution function f lambda given by this gamma distribution with our specified parameters as alpha and delta so we want to see how do we combine the exponential distribution which models our claim amounts given the parameter of lambda and this gamma distribution which now models the parameter of lambda itself which you have said will differ from one policyholder to the other will differ from one insured to another so to be able to do so we must use the concept of uh, the joint density function because we now have two distributions and to be able to combine them, we will, uh, to, uh, to be able to combine them, we'll use the marginal distribution of each of them so that we obtain the joint distribution. So we know from uh, the probability statistic, if you want to obtain, let's say the marginal distribution of X, given that you have, uh, you have the joint density of x in this case and lambda so let's assume that the joint uh, density function is given by f x lambda so this means that this is the joint distribution function for x and lambda and you now want to obtain f of x from this joint density function what we usually do is simply to integrate the joint density function over all the possible values of lambda in this case so that whatever integrand here you have once you integrate it and replace all the values or uh, substitute for the corresponding values of lambda then whatever will remain will actually be a function of x in this case so that in a similar way if you wanted to obtain um, let's say the distribution the marginal distribution of lambda 
then we'd have to integrate the joint density function with respect now to x and substitute for all the values of x so that what remains after integration is now a function of lambda so again we can obtain the joint density function given the conditional density function uh, by simply multiplying the marginal distribution in this case of lambda with the conditional distribution of x given lambda so this simply equates to the joint density function so we can employ uh, this uh, equation so that we're able to determine uh, the respective distribution in our case so we have our exponential distribution which defines the conditional distribution of x given lambda where now my lambda here varies again with respect to this gamma distribution so we can employ the second equation where we have said this second equation uh, whatever is in the integrand simply depicts the joint density function so that my, my f of uh, lambda here is the gamma and my f of x given lambda is the exponential distribution so that now the result will now depict the uh, claim amount so we can now do our integration so we can replace this is my f of lambda depicted by the gamma distribution and this is my f of x given lambda uh, which is what we have here so we can now integrate so in that first equation all we've done is simply to substitute for the marginal distribution of lambda and the conditional distribution of x given lambda and in combining the two we are trying to obtain now the marginal distribution of the claim amounts of x so we now need to uh, carry out this integration and in the same approach that we used uh, when we were looking at the severity distribution where we had quite a number of distributions uh, involving integration and we found that the easiest way to integrate such functions especially when there's an exponent term is to make the integrand seem similar to the uh, distribution of a standard uh, distribution so in this case we can combine the exponent terms so that in combining the exponent term i'll have my result as this we can also factor out terms that do not involve my lambda there so that i'll have my delta raised to alpha gamma alpha outside the integral so that uh, what remains of it uh, will now be uh, so this is the exponent then we'll have lambda raised to alpha minus one times alpha so if you combine these two lambdas and so if you combine them we'll be summing the powers so i'll have lambda raised to alpha so now if you look at this integrand and compare it with the pdf of a gamma distribution it compares to a new gamma distribution with my new parameters as my alpha transforms into alpha plus one and now my delta transforms into x plus delta so it means that i can now rewrite this equation in form of a standard gamma distribution with parameters gamma, uh, alpha plus one and x plus delta so that in so doing i will introduce the term of uh, gamma alpha plus one so uh, we, if we were to write it uh, so this depicts the gamma distribution with parameters alpha and delta so it means i needed to have a delta raised to alpha plus one so that in this case my new delta is x plus delta and i need to raise that to alpha plus one uh, uh, so yeah sorry it's just alpha so in this case, I will raise x plus delta to alpha plus one. And because I do not want to change originally what is in this equation, I will get rid of that effect by multiplying that uh, new delta to power alpha, both in the numerator and the, in the denominator. So this is what you have in the denominator. 
Uh, so whatever is not written has already integrated to one or is simply the gamma function, the integral of this gamma function. Uh, for the, we do the same thing for the denominator, it should be gamma alpha. So I should have my new gamma alpha here where my alpha is now alpha plus one. And because again, I do not want to change what was originally there, I multiply it both to the numerator and to the denominator. So what will remain in the integrand is one over gamma plus one, one, uh, one over gamma alpha plus one. And then in the numerator, I can take it outside the brackets. And in the writing uh, the, the function as such, then I will have this constant outside and why this constant is introduced it's simply because we have now rewritten this integrand in form of a standard gamma distribution with parameters alpha plus one and x plus delta so that our integrand can now integrate to one because it's a the integral of a pdf so that what remains is now uh, this expression so this expression can be simplified further so I have the term of delta raised to alpha, and this is also x plus delta raised to alpha plus one. So those two can be combined. Then this gamma function, because we know we can express a gamma function in terms of factorial, then it simply means that uh, this gamma alpha is actually contained in, uh, in gamma alpha plus one, because we know the gamma of alpha is the same as alpha minus one factorial. So in so doing, it means that I can express my gamma alpha plus one as simply alpha factorial. And what we have here, this would be alpha minus one factorial. So if you were to expand the alpha factorial uh, in this gamma function here, then it will be your alpha factorial would be equals to alpha times alpha minus one factorial, which would cancel out with what we have in the denominator. And therefore in the numerator will remain with a function of alpha, which is now our end result here. So this, if you look at uh, the resultant distribution of X now uh, conforms into another distribution, which is the Pareto with parameter alpha and delta as my as the corresponding distribution. So you see we have uh, moved from the conditional claim distribution of x given lambda following an exponential and combine that uh, with the evolution of uh, the lambda parameter which follows a gamma and through the mixture of the two, we have resulted into a new distribution, which is the Pareto distribution. So you can carry on uh, with the second example. So there we were looking at claim severity. So we can do the same for claim numbers. So the annual number of claims from an individual policy in a portfolio has a Poisson distribution and the variability in data among policies is modeled uh, by using that of uh, the portfolio. So it is modeled uh, using that over the portfolio and individual values of data have a gamma distribution with parameters alpha and delta. So derive the mixture distribution for the annual number of claims from each policy in the portfolio. So our Poisson distribution here simply gives us the conditional distribution of the number of claims given theta. And then we now have this theta varying from one policy holder to the other, from one policy to the other. So that our theta now again varies according to now our gamma distribution. So approach the approach is similar to the earlier example. So we we'll use the same equation uh, that we had and because we're integrating with respect to theta which conforms into uh, a gamma distribution which is continuous then we'll be uh, integrating in this case so we'll be doing it as an integral of the probability mass function of n given lambda 
given theta, sorry, given theta is our parameter, which in this case here is refers to a Poisson distribution. That's why you can see this is the uh, probability mass function of a Poisson distribution. And then you multiply that with the corresponding PDF of theta, or f of theta, which is the gamma distribution. So this is the gamma distribution here. And remember, uh, if we say that theta follows the gamma distribution, from your tables, what you do is you replace where you have the x with now theta because theta is now your new random variable. So that's why you can see this is theta raised to alpha minus one and the exponent is raised to negative delta times theta. And we are integrating this with respect to theta because theta is now a random variable. So once you have this, uh, the rest is now carrying out the integration and always ensure that um, you're aiming to simplify the integrands so that it conforms into a standard uh, distribution with new parameters. So that is what we shall uh, aim to do. So again, you can combine the terms of the exponent because that is what will guide you to identify what is the new distribution. So if you do so, uh, you'll find that if you combine these exponent terms, then you'll have your exponent raised to negative delta plus one theta. So in this case, it means that this was originally a gamma of alpha delta, where the exponent was raised to negative delta theta. So if you have your new exponent term being to the power of uh, negative delta plus one, it means that you are now your original delta parameter has transformed into a delta plus one parameter, which is what we have there. So we can again, so we now have seen uh, that it is likely that our new uh, distribution is still a gamma distribution with now predefined parameters. So again, what guides us to identify the order of the alpha is what our random variable is actually raised to. So the, our random variable in this case was theta, which was raised to alpha minus one. So if you combine this theta and this theta, so you have theta in, uh, raised to n plus alpha minus one, then it simply means that your alpha here has now transformed into the parameter of n plus alpha. So it means that you can now make your integrand here look similar to that of a gamma distribution with parameters n plus alpha and delta plus one. And remember, you do not want to change the original equation, which is what we have here. So you need to cancel, uh, introduce terms to get rid of terms which were not originally there. So what I've written, or uh, what is written out here is now the standard distribution of the gamma, of the new gamma function with this as the defined parameters. But in this equation, for instance, we did not have the gamma of n plus alpha. So we need to get rid of this. And how do we do that? We simply introduce it into the numerator so that if you cancel this and that, then we'd have no term of gamma of n plus alpha. So you do the same for all the terms. So again, we did not, uh, we had n factorial but in this case, uh, we have what? Uh, that one will still remain as it were. Okay, that's okay. What else have we introduced? We have introduced delta plus one raised to n plus alpha. So this here was originally not there. What we had was simply delta raised to alpha, which is what we have here. So we need to get rid of this effect. So it appears in the numerator. Uh, for this integrand, we get rid of it by dividing or simply putting it in the denominator. So that now what appears in the integrand, since it's already a PDF with the new parameters, it simply will integrate one and we're left with whatever is outside the integrand. So this can be simplified further uh, to make it conform into a known standard distribution. However, it is not always that it 
uh, the resultant distribution conforms into a known standard distribution. So we may have situations where uh, that is not the case. However, in this case, given that we have uh, the gamma functions, which we know we can express in terms of um, factorials, then it is likely that this will conform into a negative binomial distribution. So how you know that is simply you have these gamma functions, which can be expressed as factorials, and you also have uh, this function here. So for instance, uh, I can separate this function to be in such a way that I'll have delta divided by delta plus one, all that raised to alpha, and that can be multiplied with um, one, one over delta plus one raised to n, which is what we have here. So that if you did uh, one minus one minus delta over delta plus one, then you'll find that it will be equal to what you have here. So this is a, like an aspect of P and Q. And in the same manner, we can now express this ratio in terms of combination. So we, so we defined or we said that if you have gamma alpha, that's the same as alpha minus one factorial. So if we expand that in terms of factorial, then here you'd have n plus alpha minus one factorial and to the diminutive you have n factorial and here you'll have alpha minus one factorial. So if you were to write that in terms of combinations, then it simply means you'd have n plus alpha minus one uh, combination n so that this will be the uh, the end result. So uh, whatever we have here is now corresponding to a negative binomial distribution. So again, we have moved from a Poisson distribution and a gamma distribution being mixed together. And the resultant model is now a negative binomial distribution. So we can look at another example. So again, here we have clean numbers from individual policies in a portfolio, have a binomial distribution. And the uh, distribution, the parameter P varies over the portfolio with beta, alpha, beta, alpha and beta distribution. Find the mixture distribution. So here we want to combine the binomial distribution, which help uh, and uh, with a beta. So a parameter that is varying is now P. So we have the individual claim numbers uh, the distribution of the claim numbers given the parameter P are the ones following the binomial. And then the P is now varying from one policyholder to the next or from one portfolio with respect to this beta. So we'll apply the same approach. Remember, uh, we integrate with respect to the distribution that we are considering. So in this case, our P is what is varying and therefore we will combine or we'll be integrating with respect to, to P. So you can fit uh, substitute for the corresponding distributions like so. And then you can now make combined terms in the integrand. So you have P there, you have P there, that can be combined. You have one minus P, you have one minus P. So that as well can be combined. And once you do so again, uh, you have a gamma alpha plus beta, so that can be left. So guided by the combination of P and one minus P, uh, which is what we have here, then it is now possible to now determine uh, which distribution can we make this integrand look like and what will be our respective parameters. So if this was originally a beta distribution with parameters alpha and beta, it simply means that our alpha has not transformed into x plus alpha, and our beta has transformed into n minus x plus beta. 
So we can now make this integrand again look similar to that of a better distribution with this as the new parameters and then ensure that we do not change originally, uh, we do not change uh, the original equation by simply getting rid of the terms that we have introduced. So we need to get rid of this term by multiplying it in the, to get rid of these two terms by multiplying them in the numerator. So that whatever we have here will integrate to one and this will be the resultant claim distribution. So you can see in this case, uh, it has not uh, conformed into any standard distribution uh, that we may know of. And uh, it is uh, it's relatively difficult to actually simplify this further. So we have those scenarios occurring. So that is our mixture distributions. So where we are saying that it is possible for us to assume uh, that the claim numbers or the claim severity follow a certain distribution with a given parameter, but that parameter is definitely not going to be the same for one policyholder to the other. So it needs also to be defined by another distribution. That's why we carry out mixture distributions. So we shall sit our cards next week and it shall cover the content up to the mixture distributions.